Oh yeah, baby, it's time once again for another episode of This Old Outboard. Last time on This Old Outboard. Holy moly macaroni. Doesn't look like any fun. But I'm going to do it. Now looking down in there, you can't see that old o-ring in there. It should be protruding a little bit. Now if this screws up, I'm screwed. Alright, so I went over my edges here with the uh, wire brush and, and here too, my surfaces, because I want my you know, everything clean when I put my new gasket in. And I did the outside, but you can't really tell much different. But the only way I can see to get it out of there is to try to grab it and pull it out. I mean, there's no way to tap it out this way. Um, I don't have anything I can put in there to try to pull it out, that type of thing, uh, without screwing it up. Anything I use on it's going to screw it up. How do you get these damn things out? Vice grips or something, pop them on there, see if I can gently get this thing out of there. Well, I can't get it out. I put the vice grips on it and, you know, tugged and twisted and it just, you know, this brass is soft and it's just screwing it up. What I did was I tapped this down with a hammer. Yep, my my bushy, my brass in there, tapped it down, and it seems to be much tighter now. So it's in there pretty tight now. Then I had it like right about there, and I put my mouth on it and gave it a blow. Now I couldn't get any air coming through. So I'm gonna go with it the way it is. That's it, man, that's it. New impeller, new gasket. Couldn't do the O-ring, it's just it's gonna be a mess. I think the O-ring's gonna be fine. Hang on to the new one. And see what happens down the road. So it's drying up. Oh yeah, this feels good now, boy, wow. That second coat look nice. All right. Or should I say, all right, all right, all right. Uh, these are off some old boat seats, if you've been watching. And I'm going to use them to fix the knee, I believe it's called, the transom knee, on the boat. On the Starcraft, because the ones on there, the knee on there, is all broken and screwed up. So I got to get these old old screws out. Got a little WD or a PB on there, soaking. Good stainless though. I don't want to cut them and uh, drill these out and clean them up, bring them down, and install them. People are saying, um, you know, some of these forms that I'm looking at, reading, and blah blah blah, is to pre-drill the holes in your transom board. You know, slide it in there, mark it, all your holes, drill it, take it, you know, take it out and drill it. But if I'm not mistaken, you know, when you drill that hole in that board, the board's laying there like this, say. Right, here's your board, and here's your mark, and then you're drilling it, you're going to drill it straight. If I'm not mistaken, that transom is on a little bit of an angle. So, if you drill that hole in here straight, put that transom in, and it sits like this, the hole on this side, it's not going to match. So... I'm, you know, I talked about it before. You get one of those jigs. They got them at Harbor Freight, twenty bucks. Put it on your drill. Put it on, you know, whatever you're drilling, and it'll it'll drill it in that angle. 
So I'm not going to pre-drill because it just doesn't look right to me. Let me get these things cleaned up. All right, there might be a change of plan here. Let's see if I can figure this out. Now what I was talking about, got, I'm going to leave this piece on. Well, I'm not going to bust this off because it's not cracked here. Then on this side it's cracked. And I'm going to cut this off to match this side. But when I put my piece on, like that, you know, I'm going to have that, that space. So in other words, this isn't going to be flush like that. It's going to be out because of these pieces. I don't want to cut it all off. So I'm thinking this bigger piece. If I cut this off, let's see if I can lay this down. If I cut this off, then this piece will protrude forward. See there, like that. And then I'll be flush. like that I don't like that so I guess what I need to do is because I was thinking you know I'll put a filler piece back there yeah I don't know which way to freaking go now all right final decision I'm gonna leave these pieces on Cut this one to match this side. Get rid of this. You go with the small ones. And I'm not going to cut these. I'm going to leave them the way they are. This top hole will line right up with this back hole. And then I just have to drill these two holes out. I'll put a spacer. Just get a couple of big washers back here take up the space of this I think that's going to be the quickest easiest way to go all right so you can see here my two pieces and my holes and how badly <laughs> they don't line up wow way off look at this side holy mackerel so I won't be able to use those holes like I wanted to, which means I'm either have to gonna bring these up a little higher, drill all three holes, or down a little bit. Man, never fails. It's always something, right? better still like seems to be sliding <clears throat> if that makes any sense not going in there good what the heck is going on Am I drilling in an angle let me get that flashlight and look in there yeah I think I just made it all right, so I'm just gonna, you know, big, 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 put these in, see what it feels like. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, get a few more in there. And then one big bolt will go through the bottom, these two holes. And then I went with the drill in the hole, top hole up here, instead of down here. Just like the way it should be all right. All right, so that's not too shabby. Um, it's not beautiful. And then, like I said, bolt be put in down here, a cross, cross bolt. If you look inside here, I don't know if you can get an angle. One at the top, one right below it. I put a couple of the longer ones in, but they're they're popping right at the same point. So it's not really doing me any good to put the longer one in there. 
All right, so I got one more put up the top here. And I did the same thing, a couple of shorts, a couple of long. And then, like I said, you see the gap. So I'll have to get some washers back here to fill this in a little bit. But, <laughs> I wish I had pre-drilled all of these holes. Man, the, the, every time I put the bit on there, it, burr, burr, you know, it starts running off on me. So pre-drill would have been nicer, a little cleaner looking job, that's for sure. And I hope these look even. Because I'm eyeballing it upside down. So I kind of got a pilot hole going there, trying to keep it as center as I possibly can. And get in there with a step drill. And just try to hollow that out the same size of that hole. Pain in the butt. And this time I punched a starter off on it. Biggest problem is the drill's too long. There we go. This Well, I'm off a little bit. This one's a little lower on this side. Son of a prick of fragger. Straight that way, but not that way. Try some. Yeah. Oh well. It's what happens when you work upside down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get some sanding done here and lay down a coat of paint on this thing. All along here is thick from the resin. Smooth that out. That's why I didn't want to do any cloth because I didn't want to change the thickness. It it's fine the way it is. All right, so on the back side, just did a, just a light sand on it, and I know there's resin in those screw holes, anything, but these two, I couldn't get them out. So I took the grinder; they were sticking up a little high. Took the grinder, buzzed them off. But I think I might mix a little bit of resin and just double pour it in all these little holes, just to be on the safe side. All right, baby, got me a little bit mixed up here, and I mixed it up super hot. Super hot. Better dry fast. I ain't gonna get full on the ground. <laughs> Thickening up. Yeah, baby. Hot coat. All right. That came out real good. Uh, sealed up and clean it off, flip it over, get some paint on it. All right, so I just wiped it down, cleaned it off, and I just realized I never put any resin on the top yet. So I got to do that first. set up fast man fast well that looks pretty good a little bit tacky drying up but let's get get her flipped over with some paint on her all right so this is the oyster white I bought this thought it was gonna match the outside color of the boat but it's still too yellowy and I figure I'll use it up first coat on here. And I put some of that Japan dryer in here to make it dry faster. They also say throw a little acetone in it too to make it dry faster. 
But this stuff dries pretty quick. It's the Rust-Oleum top side. So I think it'll probably be good to go. That's all pretty thick. I think it's starting to tack up already. Freaking fan blowing crap on it. Uh, I think it's air bubbles. Yeah, it's tacking up already. I'm gonna try the the torch to see if it'll take these bubbles out. can't tell is it crap is it air bubbles is it both well we'll let it go see what it looks like all right so just let this dry up hopefully it'll be dry before the rain comes it looks good in some parts and other parts looks like crap Probably shouldn't have done it super thick first coat like that. When I put the second white coat on the interior, I'll do the second coat on this after it's installed. So, let me get my mess cleaned up and see what happens in a couple hours with this thing. Alright, it's looking pretty good. You still see bubbles and crap on this end I guess because it's just I put it on way too thick but where it's drying it's looking pretty good you know I know better than pour this stuff on like that but I thought with that Japan dryer I put in it was supposed to set up and dry real real fast it doesn't seem like it worked and I dumped a buttload in there it will dry <laughs> sooner or later and I hope sooner because I can smell the rain coming and depending on what the humidity is which I know it's ridiculous because the heat is on baby the heat is on that's the problem too I mean you just don't want to do anything you don't have to absolutely do <laughs> when the heat is on I think, yeah, according to the old clock in there on the microwave, 258. And you know what that means? Mr. Nap Time is calling my name. Hee hee hee. Go lay down in the AC, baby, cool off. All right, had my old man nap. Anyway, it's looking good. Here's, you know, I was picking at some of these spots down here. It's got some hairs in it. It's not dry, dry, but um, hairs in it from the roller. Then these little bubble marks. But other than that type of thing, they have more hairs in there. Um, looks, looks pretty good. It's like I said, it's still not dry, dry. Um, the crazy thing is, this is sticky as sh Unbelievable. Why is this so sticky? Same paint. Weird, wild, wacky stuff, man. Weird, wild, wacky stuff. Oh yeah, baby, next time on this old outboard. See my gap? That's a big ass gap. I thought I was just going to be able to throw a couple washers in there. I'm going to need more than a couple, so I'm going to do it that way. I need to put something in there. 
that came out huge. Now how did that happen? There's no way you're going to squeeze all this together. And, you know, those pieces underneath, it's just a huge gap. Follow the real life saga of this old outboard baby. Don't forget to subscribe.